step into the digital landscape of the late 80 seconds with the television series Max Headroom, a groundbreaking cyberpunk show that captivated audiences with its dystopian narrative and futuristic vision. Whether you were drawn to its commentary on media manipulation or fascinated by the innovative storytelling, this series left an indelible mark on viewers. Have you ever pondered the impact of Max Headroom on your life? Perhaps it sparked a personal revelation or resonated with the technological changes of the era. Share your story in the comments below. Moreover, among the myriad roles in the series, which one stood out as your favorite? The diverse cast and their compelling performances brought this cybernetic world to life, making it a challenge to pick just one. Before delving into your cherished memories, let's set the stage with some intriguing facts about the show. Max Headroom not only pioneered the use of computer-generated imagery on television, but also tackled social issues such as corporate greed and the consequences of a hyper-connected society. Its unique blend of satire and suspense made it a trailblazer in the realm of science fiction television. Now, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Max Headroom. Whether it's a memorable episode, a connection to the characters, or an unexpected impact on your life, your stories add depth to the legacy of this iconic series. We would love to hear your reflections and anecdotes in the comments below. Embrace the nostalgia and celebrate the enduring influence of Max Headroom on popular culture. Share your thoughts and let the conversation unfold. Your stories are an essential part of the tapestry that makes this show unforgettable. In the 1987 TV series Max Headroom, the character Ped Zing, chairman of the Zigzag Corporation, draws an interesting connection to street signs. Ped Zing's name is derived from the street sign abbreviation for pedestrian crossing. This quirky naming choice adds a touch of humor to the show, aligning with the futuristic and satirical tone of Max Headroom. The series, known for its distinct visuals, raises questions about its filming locations. While some exteriors are shot in an easily recognizable defunct industrial site, the extent of filming within the Lorimer Telepictures former MGM Studio Buildings lot, later becoming the Sony Pictures Studio lot, remains unclear. This ambiguity adds an element of mystery to the production process of Max Headroom. An intriguing aspect of the show's production is the use of fiberglass suits for Max Headroom. Despite having six wildly different designs, only the signature black suit is utilized in the series. The reason behind this singular choice remains unknown, leaving fans curious about the creative decision-making behind Max's wardrobe. These unconventional details contribute to the unique charm of the 1987 TV series Max Headroom offering viewers an intriguing blend of humor, mystery, and distinctive visual elements. The show's ability to weave these elements together adds to its enduring appeal, creating a memorable viewing experience. Coast to Coast, the original makeup team responsible for the Max Headroom show, played a pivotal role in maintaining Max's distinctive look in the 1987 TV series. Their expertise extended to the original Max Talking Headroom show, Max Coca-Cola adverts, and guest appearances on Wogan, Letterman, and Sesame Street. This continuity in visual identity added a layer of authenticity to Max's character across various platforms. The series also marked a significant shift in Max's portrayal by Matt Frewer. In contrast to the original movie and the Max Headroom show, Frewer's Max in the 1987 series exhibited a more high-pitched and manic demeanor. This version of Max actively engaged with the cast, becoming a central figure in the plot of departure from the original laid-back and cocky iteration that often addressed the audience alone. The evolution of Max's character brought a new dynamic to the show, influencing its tone and interaction with the viewers. Adding to the futuristic atmosphere were the cutting-edge graphics generated by a Commodore Amiga, a top-of-the-line computer in 1987. These graphics contributed to the show's distinctive visual elements, aligning with its satirical and forward-looking theme. In conclusion, the 1987 TV series Max Headroom stands out not just for its intriguing plot and character evolution, but also for the seamless integration of Coast to Coast's expertise and the use of state-of-the-art technology and graphics a testament to the meticulous attention to detail that define the production. In the realm of 1980s television, a few notable facts define the legacy of the Max Headroom phenomenon. 
One crucial aspect is the trio of actors Matt Frewer, Amanda Pays, and William Morgan Shepard who transitioned from the original UK version, bringing a sense of continuity to the 1987 series. This rare retention of key cast members underscores the show's commitment to maintaining its core identity. Interestingly, when the series faced cancellation in its second season, an unexpected twist awaited. While Max Headroom bid farewell, the show's final announcement echoed the words of Winston Churchill, promising to fight on the streets of Dallas and Miami Vice. This unconventional departure added a layer of intrigue, leaving an indelible mark on the show's legacy. Beyond the screen, the fate of Max Headroom intersected with the world of sitcoms. After its cancellation, plans unfolded for Mr. Belvedere to fill the void left by Max Headroom. However, the unexpected happened. Far from being short-lived, Mr. Belvedere endured and even gained an extended lease of life, defying initial expectations with 88 additional episodes. These interconnected threads reveal the intricate tapestry of Max Headroom's journey beyond the confines of its original airings. The show's resilience, unique departures, and unexpected connections make it a fascinating subject of exploration, reflecting the dynamic landscape of television in the 1980s. In the midst of its second season, the fate of the Max Headroom series took an unexpected turn. The cancellation struck while the production was underway for an episode titled Families, written by Michael Cashalt. Unfortunately, this episode, along with four others in varying stages of development, including Thera's Tale, The Trial, X-Mass, and Bring Me the Head of Network 23, were never completed. The abrupt end left fans hanging with unfulfilled storylines and unanswered questions. As the series evolved into its second season, viewers might have noticed a distinct change in Matt Frewer's portrayal of Max. In an effort to enhance the impression that the character was computer-generated, Frewer's makeup applications took on a more angular appearance around the chin, cheekbones, and nose. This altered version of the Max makeup also found its way into other productions, such as the original Talking Max Headroom Show and the Max for President Coca-Cola adverts in late 1988. The temporal setting of the Max Headroom story has always been a point of curiosity. While the exact time remains uncertain, the character Bryce, according to Max Headroom, is stated to be 18 years old, with records indicating his birth on October 7, 1988. This detail places the narrative in the intriguing time frame of 2005-2006, adding an extra layer of mystery to the series. The cancellation, makeup transformations, and the enigmatic timeline contribute to the multifaceted nature of the 1987 TV series Max Headroom. The unfinished episodes and the evolution of Max's appearance showcase the complexity and unpredictability that define the show's journey. The unanswered questions surrounding the production and the character's temporal context keep the intrigue alive, making Max Headroom a series that continues to captivate audiences, even decades later. As we bid adieu to the mesmerizing realm of Max Headroom, take a moment to stroll down the corridors of your own memories. Delve into the cyberpunk wonders of 1987 and relish the intoxicating blend of dystopia and digital charisma that this timeless series brought forth. Max Headroom, an icon of the electronic era, transcended the screen and nestled into the hearts of those who dared to question the boundaries of reality. Did it spark a rebellious fire within you or perhaps ignite a fascination with the untamed frontiers of the digital landscape? Now, as you stand at the crossroads of nostalgia and reflection, share with us your most cherished fragments of this cybernetic saga. Whether it's the glitchy charm of Edison Carter or the enigmatic allure of the virtual realm, Max Hedrun carved its own niche in the mosaic of pop culture. What echoes of your own journey resonate with the pulsating beats of this cyberpunk symphony? We're eager to hear your tales, your musings, your uniquely human connection with the digital echoes of a bygone era. As we navigate the echoes of the past, let your words become pixels, constructing a collective mosaic of memories that immortalize Max Headroom in the annals of your personal history. Your stories are the pixels that compose the vibrant tapestry of this cyberpunk odyssey. Thank you for joining us on this riveting exploration of memories and connections. Your time and thoughts are the lifeblood of this narrative. Until we meet again in the digital corridors of reflection, stay wired and keep those memories pulsating. Crafted with bits of nostalgia and cybernetic charm, 